Welcome to the Your Next Best Step podcast, where it's all about real experiences, real lessons, real hurdles, and everything in between. I'm Teresa Cantley, and I'm bringing you over 20 years experience in business, leadership, and marketing to help you shift out of your corporate thinking and into being an entrepreneur so you can maximize your results, build and empower your team, and make a bigger impact. It's time to turn your ideas into innovation, and that's only the beginning. So let's get started. Hey there. I know there is so much going on in the world, and it's so easy to get caught up thinking you just need to get through this time and you just need to survive rising costs and inflation, delays in getting products, struggles hiring and retaining good people, trying to get that edge that allows sales to rise and customer loyalty to increase, figuring out how to stand out online in a sea of competition when you haven't even gotten your website completely done. I'm here to tell you there's a better way to approach these things. There's a better way to approach this time that we're going through, a way that will lead to higher profits, more money in your pocket, and more time to do the things you love to do. And that's where I come in. I come in to help you fix what's broken, plug the holes, so you can insulate your business from any impacts that might come your way. Over the past decade, I've helped many product-based business owners to turn their business around and increase their income and their profits 20%, 30%, and even up to 80%. Yes, I said that correctly, and you heard that correctly. So what did they do? They stopped spending money on random marketing and software that doesn't work. They hired a high-impact, high-growth team to help them move the business forward so they didn't have to do everything themselves. They implemented processes to streamline work so they could do more with less, and they increase profitability by really and truly understanding their numbers. And most importantly, they started thinking like a CEO and not just a small business owner. And you can do this too. You really can. And I want to help you. You and me working one-to-one to get the results you've been working towards for years. Imagine going from six figures to seven figures to eight figures even to nine figures. It's totally, totally possible. So apply to work with me in my exclusive Business Masters one-to-one program and let's do this. Spaces are limited, but the results that you get are truly extraordinary. So you gonna do it? Are you in? I look forward to seeing you on our next call. Oh, hello, 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 and welcome back to another episode of the Your Next Best Step podcast. I am so happy that you're here, and I'm so happy that you're joining me today. I have my cup of coffee, and today we are actually going to talk about your focus. This is something, and elevating it, by the way, this is something that a lot of people that I work with struggle with, and you may be struggling with it too. As a business owner, you're always pulled in so many different directions, especially now with everything that we're going through with our economy and just as as small business owners and everything we've been through in the past two years. But even before that, you know, we start our business, you start your business and you go all in, like just all in and you work your butt off. And you are doing everything. You wear multiple hats. You are handling marketing and you're handling um, sales. You're bringing people out at the cash register. You're handling inventory. You're handling buying. You're handling hiring people. You're handling making things. Whatever it is in your business, you are involved in everything. But as we know, that can't, it's not sustainable. It's not sustainable for anybody. And what ends up happening is you burn out because you're doing all of the things and you're trying all of the things 
And that can only last so long. Now, you might be a hustler. I know I was a hustler when I first started, and I thought, I got this. You know, my schedule is totally packed, and I got this. And when I realized I didn't have it because I ended up completely burning out and just melting down. So if you're listening, you might know exactly what that is because you may have experienced that yourself. So several episodes ago, I did um, an episode on taking radical responsibility in your business. And if you've listened to it, you know which episode I'm talking about. And when I say radical responsibility, I don't mean that you need to be responsible for everything. Because as I said, that's only sustainable for so long. I mean, when you first start your business, when you first open your doors, when you first hang your shingle out, you have to, you have to hustle. It's part of it. It's part of, it's part of the admit, it's, it's the admission to becoming an entrepreneur. But when we get to, or when you get to a certain level, you need to do things differently. Because as, as I've said multiple times, and maybe you've heard it from other people, but what got you to this point in your business isn't going to take you to the next level. So when I did this episode on taking radical responsibility, I had a lot of feedback on it, a lot, where people were like, holy mackerel. Like, I mean, I, I had somebody saying, I felt like you were, ta- you were actually talking to me. And maybe if you listened to it, you might have thought, oh my gosh, is she talking to me? <laughs> Because, again, taking radical responsibility doesn't mean that you need to be responsible for everything. It just means that you are responsible for driving that vision, driving the goals of the business, and staying focused on what's important. So the topic of our episode today is all about elevating our focus, elevating your focus. And What I mean by that is, and I I really have seen it, you know, a lot with my own clients recently, um, you know, over the past two years is their focus has gotten, it's it's not even there. (laughs) It's just kind of gotten all over the place because, you know, when impacts happen in our business, when things um, come into the business or, or, or are impacting the infrastructure, the products, the people, you know, all of the things that I talk about that make a resilient business. When those things happen, it's very easy to lose your focus. Very easy because, you know, that human instinct that we have for fight or flight kicks in, right? No matter what happens in your life, you know, when something, when a challenge happens, it's just human nature to go into that either that defense mode or that protection mode or that control master mode. And the thing is, is that it's okay to stay there. I mean, it's a listen to me. <laughs> it's okay to have that happen, but it's not okay to stay there. And that's why we're talking about elevating your focus, which is one of the big pieces. It's one of the three key pieces of taking radical responsibility in your business. And what differentiates super successful or successful business owners from people who are struggling, it all has to do with focus. And I can say for myself, I am not, I am definitely not um, immune from this because I go through this myself from time to time. You know, I have, bi- I have a big vision of what I want to do in my business. I have big goals. And there are times when my focus, I get stuck in, like I always say, I get in the weeds. I get stuck in the weeds. I get stuck in the, those day-to-day activities and the details. And the thing is, is that it's okay for you to, for you to, to be there. It's okay for you to kind of go there every now and then. I mean, I'm not going to lie. I'm not going to tell you it's not okay because it is because we're all human. But as a business owner, as a visionary, as a CEO, you can't stay there. And I, for myself, like I said, I go there from time to time, but you can't stay there. So how do we elevate our focus? Well, first of all, one of the biggest things is just taking a step back. Taking a step back and really slowing down and saying, all right, 
you know, we have all of these things happening. You know, the um, Fed just increased interest rates again. You know, costs are going up. I mean, Jesus, my husband went to go fill my gas tank and I was like, five fifty a gallon. Wow. So costs are going up. You know, we have inflation and just kind of looking at, I know people don't take time to do this as, as much as they really should, but looking at what is really working and what isn't working. And I had a conversation with one of my clients recently where, you know, he's having some struggles in his business with his team. And, you know, we were talking the one day and, you know, just talking about, okay, what can you do? And my advice to him was, you know, like looking at, okay, what is at the core of your business? What is working? What is not working? And how can we simplify things to get over this, this hill right now, this mountain that you're trying to climb over instead of trying to focus on this program and this, this thing over here and making sure that we have good service and having good food and doing this with the bar and da, 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 da. Instead of doing that, let's focus on what's really working and let's do that even better. And as I said, you know, more often than not, people don't want to take that time to slow down and say, okay, what's working in my business and what's not working in your business. But it is so crucial to do that. And really it's crucial every 90 days, regardless if you're having challenges or not, to stop and say, how can we adjust? How can you as the business owner adjust what you're focusing on? And maybe you've been focusing heavily on the day-to-day details and not letting your team handle things. So maybe you need to look at that and say, am I really focusing on the vision of the business, okay? And the vision being the GPS, the things, the why behind what we do in our business. Am I really focusing on that and continuing to move that forward versus focusing on the nitty gritty details and the day-to-day activities that really aren't moving the business forward. So they're just keeping the business open. (laughs) But here's the thing. You have people, you have a team. If you've taken the time to do that, you have people that can help you with those day-to-day activities so that you can focus on the things you really need to be focused on, such as, because I get that, I do get asked this question a lot. Well, well, Teresa, what should I focus on? You're telling me I need to elevate my focus. You're telling me I need to focus on the right things. What are those right things? Well, number one is your numbers. What do your numbers really look like? What does, when you look at your profit and loss statement, you know, are you spending money on things that you really shouldn't be spending money on? Are you making sure that you're setting aside a portion of profit to either reinvest back in the business, to give bonuses, to, you know, do whatever? You know, are you taking time to kind of analyze what's going on? You know, freight is going bonkers right now, the cost of freight for a variety of reasons. You know, looking at it, like let's say you're somebody who gets stuff from overseas, looking at that and saying, what percentage of freight are we paying based on, you know, what we're spending, what we're buying, okay? What is our cost? What is our percentage of our cost that we're spending on freight? And really kind of getting clear on that and then saying, ooh, maybe we need to look for another freight carrier. Or, you know, what are we spending for our phone bills? Ooh. Maybe we need to look into different options. There's so many options right now. Zoom has options, Grasshopper. I mean, there's so many different things for, um, you know, having phone lines digitally. So, you know, looking into those things and saying, where can we do better? Okay. And then also, so that's one thing, like really understanding what's going on in your business, looking at your numbers, taking a step back and looking at the numbers and analyzing what's really happening in your business and then making some really wise decisions on maybe we can get better rates with freight. Maybe we can get, you know, better rates with our phone company and our, and our internet, or 
maybe we can get better. Maybe we need to find a different purveyor, you know, for food. Maybe we need to, you know, and kind of looking at all of those pieces. Also taking a look at and saying, do I have the right people in the right spots? (laughs) Do I really have the right people in the right places? And if the answer is no, or maybe you're looking at it saying, I'm missing a team member. And this is what I need to, this is, this is where I need to have a team member. And how you do that is by looking at the activities that you're doing in your own day and saying, am I spending a lot of time on X, Y, Z that I could really hire somebody to help me with this? And the best way to do that is doing something that I call, and I mean, I see many people do it. It's a time audit, just writing down, what are you doing throughout the day? You know, from seven till eight, I'm doing this. From eight to 10, I'm doing this. From 10 till two, I'm doing this. And looking at that and saying, okay, how can I, how can we as a business either delegate this? Like, how can I delegate this as a business owner? How can I automate it? How can I, um, you know, maybe it's something that we need to outsource. Maybe it's something we need to just get rid of. Maybe it's just not working. You know, and taking a look at where you're spending your time and where you're potentially wasting time and you could have someone else on your team do these things. So really what it is, is just getting clear about what's happening. More often than not, you're probably spending a lot of time on stuff that you really don't need to spend time on that you could take off of your plate and either delegate, automate it, get rid of it, outsource it, you know, whatever that looks like so that you can free up your day to focus on the things that you need to focus on, such as, like I said, looking at your numbers. The other thing is focusing on once you kind of are getting clear on, all right, where am I spending my time? How can I, like, what is taking up the majority of my focus? And more often than not, like I said, it's something that you can probably get off of your plate. And after you start doing that and you're looking at your, you're really analyzing what's going on in your business, the next step is what are the next things that we can do to start moving forward? How can we make, I mean, and the biggest thing is to kind of come back to your core is how can we make this experience better for our customers? How can we take it to the next level and how can we, you know, just show up even better. Right now, people care so much about connection. They care a lot about quality. You know, I read a report uh, a couple weeks ago that was saying that people are still spending money. People are spending money, but they are spending money and they are taking time to drive places, even though gas is like skyrocketing. They are taking time to drive to places that they love. They are taking time to drive to places that they know the experience that they're going to get from the minute they walk through the door until until they leave, the time that they leave, is going to be phenomenal. They know the people. They feel comfortable. They feel that connection. They are selling quality product or they're offering quality service or they're providing, they're making quality food. They are willing to go and spend money on that stuff. They are willing to visit those places and work with those people and and have that experience because it makes them feel good and it brings that connection. So as the business owner, as the CEO, as the visionary, looking at that and saying, how can we do a better job? How can we do a better job to bridge that gap between customer and staff? How can we bring that together And what's in the middle of that between customer and employees or customer and staff is that connection, that experience, that transformation that we create with the service or the products or whatever that we're providing. So how can you take that to the next level? That's what your focus should be on. Your focus should be on the three core things that I talk about, which is an aligned strategy. So it aligns with your vision. Okay, the transformational culture, making sure that you get the right people in the right places and that relational experience. How can you take your experience in your business 
I don't even necessarily want to call it an experience, but you know, that, that, um, how is it? I want to put it. I, uh, hmm, that connection that, that, um, like I said, bridging that barrier or that boundary between customer and employee so that you can have that relational, that relational experience. I don't know another word to use for it. I'll come up with something. But those are the things that you should be focused on. Focusing on looking at your bank statement constantly. Focusing on, um, you know, employee training or focusing on, you know, when to buy bags. And like those are all the things that you should not be focused on. Those are all the things that your team should be focused on. Running yourself ragged and, you know, doing everything is not going to work. Trying to control everything, trying to focus, you know, just saying to yourself and saying to your people that we're just trying to keep the doors open is not going to work. When you take radical responsibility, one of the the first key thing that you need to do is you need to take your focus and you need to elevate it. You need to make sure that you are doing the things that that really need to be done to keep the needle moving on your business no matter what happens, okay? Starting to look at things so that you can insulate the business from any impact that comes its way, that comes your way, right? So when you do these things now, you are setting yourself up for a resilient business, a resilient future, um, and a thriving business. You know, I have seen businesses over the past two years that have had their biggest years ever. Why? Because they kept their focus on the right things. They had the right people in place and they put the right actions in place. I heard this the other day, intention rules the world. And when you have the right intention behind what you're doing, when you take ownership of your future and the future that you're building and the future that you're creating, you can't go wrong. You can't go wrong and you can only achieve the things that you really want to achieve. So the things that you want to focus on as you are elevating your focus is number one, looking at your numbers, analyzing what's really going on in your business. Number two, making sure that you have the right people in place. You have the right team. And how do you do that? Start with a time audit. Look at what you're spending your time on every single day and how long it's taking you to do things. Because more often than not, you're going to see where you're really wasting time and where you can move that off of your plate so that you can focus on the things that you need to focus on. And number three is really looking at, you know, what can you do better? How can you elevate your customer experience? What really aligns with the vision that you have for your business And how can you start taking steps now to start making those things happen? Your vision is the why behind what you do. It is that GPS that guides everything else. So making sure that you are focusing on that consistently and then aligning your actions and your strategy to take the next steps, making sure that it aligns with that GPS, that vision that you have. That's how you elevate your focus. Don't get in the weeds. Don't stay in the the day-to-day details because that will only keep you in the same place that you are right now. And if I put a money on it, you want to be in a different place. You want to be in a better place, um, in a plate, like, and just continue to move yourself forward. So hopefully this episode helped you. Um, I, we have another episode coming up where I'm going to be talking about how to get better with your calendar. This is something that I know many people struggle with. Um, I know every, every single person, when I start working with them, they're like getting them to get better with their calendar is like probably one of the biggest things. It's one of the biggest things I've struggled with. So I'm going to be talking about that on a, on an upcoming episode. So stay tuned for that. But until then, I hope you have a great rest of your week, rest of your day, and I will see you soon. Thanks for joining me, and let's say all take care of each other a little bit better, a lot bit better than we are right now. All right.
Take care. Be well. Hey there, it's Teresa, and I'm so glad you're here. I'm so glad that you join me every week to listen to this podcast. This podcast has been a dream of mine, and when we hit episode 100, I was super, super, super excited, and I know now we are on our way to episode 200. If you like what you hear, and I know you do because you're here, I would love, love, love if you could head on over and leave us a review, either on iTunes, on Google Play, on Stitcher, on whatever it is that you're listening to, um, listening to this podcast. I would absolutely love it. When we get reviews, when we get, you know, five stars, it, it enables us to show up higher in the different categories so that more people can find us and we can make a difference in more small business owners' lives. So I would love, love, love if you could go on and leave me a review. And also tell me what you love, tell me what you what you wanna hear more of and how I can help you because that's what I'm here for. I am here to give you real life experiences, real life coaching, real life stories from my work my experience helping small business owners to build their business, but also helping to, or me actually building and growing several of my own businesses. So if you love what you hear, please go over and leave a review. It would be absolutely amazing. It would mean so much to me. But until next week, take care and I will see you soon.